Let's learn about the direct form to flow graph implementation of a system function. A direct form to version of a flow graph is of interest because it minimizes the memory. That is, it, it has a minimum number of delay elements. For example, if we look at a direct form one implementation for n equals two, we see a total of four delay elements. Now, as we'll see, the, the equivalent direct form two implementation has only two delay elements. Let's find out how we can go from direct form one to direct form two. These are fully equivalent to each other in terms of the numerical calculations. As we look at the direct form one implementation, we see that we really have two subsystems in cascade. And let me, let me circle a contour around each of these subs, subsystems. I'll define this as subsystem one, call that H one of Z, and subsystem two, H two of Z. Now in terms of the system block diagram, the input would pass through the first system. Its output is then the input to the second subsystem. Since these are in cascade, we can interchange their positions and the overall system function is exactly the same. Let me interchange these two subsections of the flow graph. Now let's see what happens as a result of this interchange. Let me keep track of this uh, intermediate signal as W of N. When it passes through the, the uh, first delay element, we have W of N minus one. Now as W of N travels along and passes through this delay element, it also produces W of N minus one. From an, an efficiency standpoint, we see that we do have redundant delays. These two delays are actually producing the same result, therefore they can be consolidated. So I'll join those together, cut out half of the delay elements, or those redundant delays, and this, this gives us direct form two. And just a reminder, the, the critical thing here is that this minimizes the total memory.